The most recent entry in the Star Wars saga is Solo. It just recently came out and the reception has been mixed to say the least. But regardless of how you felt about the movie, there is no denying the fact that there are some pretty great Easter eggs placed in there, just as there are in any Star Wars movies. What is up, guys? Welcome to the multiverse. I am going to be your host today, Jimmy, and we are going to be counting down 10 Easter eggs that you may have missed in the new movie Solo. Now, we're going to be doing our best to avoid spoilers in the video, but sometimes it's just going to happen. So we'll just go ahead and put a spoiler alert here at the beginning of the video. Sound fair? Okay, let's get started. In the comment section, you let me know if you've seen Solo and what you thought about it. I've seen it, and I personally loved it. Be sure to enter our monthly giveaway. For this month, we're going to be giving away 10 tickets to see the new Ant-Man movie. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on for a chance to win. Leave a comment on why you want to win with your Twitter handle attached, and I will pick the winner at the end of the month. Good luck. Kicking off our list at number 10 is C-3PO. That's right, an Easter egg that you may have missed due to the fact, well, you pretty much had to be studying the credits in order to catch this. But one thing that made Solo stand out from most other Star Wars movies was the presence of Wookiees other than Chewbacca. Later in the movie, Chewie does explain to his Wookiee friends that he was going to go with Han. Who, who was playing the other Wookiee, you may ask? Well, that was Anthony Daniels. And who is Anthony Daniels, you may say? That is C-3PO. Leading up to this movie's release, Daniels was the only actor who has appeared in every single Star Wars movie in one way or another. And he managed to get his way into this and continue his record by playing a Wookiee. At number nine, Rogue One. Now, Rogue One was the first Star Wars story movie we got to see, and it's nice to see Solo make a little callback to it, although it was very quick and you may have missed it. At one point in the movie, the gang needs to find unrefined hyperfuel coaxium to pay back the Crimson Dawn since they had lost stock in what they were trying to deliver them before. After Han suggests this, they start listing off planets where this resource can be found, one of which is a place called Scarif, although they shut this idea down because they didn't think it was possible to get in and out. But what is Scarif? It is the planet on which the Death Star files were held in Rogue One, where the final battle took place. And yeah, it's probably a good idea to stay away from that one. At number 8, the L337 droid, L3-37. This droid in Solo definitely stole the screen plenty of times, which droids tend to do in these Star Wars movies, but she actually ended up playing a much bigger part in Star Wars than a lot of people realized, and it actually explains a certain moment in Episode 5. So for those that have not seen Solo, L3-37 is Lando's droid who gets destroyed during a fight in the movie, at which point Lando carries her broken pieces onto the Falcon. In an effort to still use her guidance systems, they plug her remains into the Millennium Falcon, allowing her to help them out and live again as part of the ship. So how does this connect with Episode 5, you may ask? Well, do you remember that moment when C-3PO is on the Falcon talking to the ship and he mentions that it has an odd dialect? Well, now you understand why. He was actually talking to L3-37 the whole time. At number seven, Indiana Jones. One key character in the new movie is Dryden Voss, a crime lord who has been the leader of the Crimson Dawn, a group led by none other than the infamous Darth Maul. Voss is played by Paul Bettany in the movie, and during the film we learn that he's pretty proud of all the various things he's collected in his office throughout his career as a criminal. But during one scene in his office, if you look closely at the artifacts on display, you will see that he actually has something from each of the original three Indiana Jones movies. He has the idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark, he has the Sankara stones from Tubal of Doom, and he has the holy freaking grail from The Last Crusade, which is a great way to pay homage to the career of Harrison Ford, the original. Han Solo actor who also played the character in the Indiana Jones franchise. At number six, Mandalorian. Speaking of Dryden Voss and his collection of artifacts from previous work, there is a very familiar set of armors stationed in his office that you may have noticed, but the significance of this may be more than you realize. In Voss's office, there is a set of Mandalorian armor, the same style worn by Jango and Boba Fett. It may not sound like a lot, but when you factor in the connection between the Fets and the Crimson Dawn, it gets even more interesting. As revealed in the movie, Darth Maul is connected to the Crimson Dawn, and Maul has a history with the Mandalorians. Plus, Tobias Beckett mentions that he killed someone named Ara Singh, who some may know from the Clone Wars cartoon as Boba Fett's mentor. So perhaps we will be seeing more of the armor in Boss's office in the upcoming Boba Fett movie, since they're much more closely connected than most people actually realize. Cracking into the top five today, Bosk. Speaking of other bounty hunters, let's talk about Bosk for a second. 
Bosk is a character who briefly appears in the Empire Strikes Back when Vader is recruiting bounty hunters to retrieve Han Solo and the Falcon, and he quickly became a fan favorite character because of his badass appearance and his badass actions in the expanded universe. But did you guys catch the little mention of Bosk in the new movie? Because before the heist that gets Val and Rio killed in Solo, Val actually mentions that he wishes they brought along better personnel like Bosk. And a quick mention, but hearing his name again was definitely a lot of fun. At number four, Wicket Returns. Everybody remembers the Ewoks in episode six. They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're great warriors who help in the defeat of the Empire. The first Ewok we saw on screen is known as Wicket, who was played by a 13-year-old named Warwick Davis. But did you guys know that Davis actually returns in Solo to play a different role? In Solo, Davis reprises his role as Weasel, a weapons dealer who actually also appeared during the pod race scene in episode one. At number three, the infamous chessboard. One of the most memorable scenes in the original Star Wars movie, which we know today as A New Hope, is when we see a group on the board, the Millennium Falcon, playing a holographic chess game. While the group is playing, Han lets him know that they should let the Wookiee win because Chewie is known for being a poor sport when losing and will probably smash the board as well as C-3PO. Well, in the new movie, we get a little call back to that sequence when Chewbacca is playing. He's playing a game and he ends up losing. And yes, he tries to smash the board, although he gets told that he can't destroy the pieces since they were holographic. It's still a nice callback to one of the first ever scenes of Chewie in the entire Star Wars saga. He made a fair move. Screaming about it can't help you. I don't have it. It's not wise to upset a wook. At number two, Bulbous and Scrimp. Speaking of the holographic chess game, let's talk about a little detail in that scene that hardly anybody has noticed unless they're a really, really avid Star Wars fan and knows their history. So after Chewie loses the game and smashes the board, if you look closely, you'll see that two of the pieces short circuit and they disappear. But did you guys know that those two pieces actually have some significance in the Star Wars world? Those two actual pieces are known as Bulbous and Scrimp and were designed by Phil Tippett, an animator on A New Hope who had designed them all the way back in the 70s to be used in the original movie. But they were cut due to the lack of space on the chessboard. Now, in the year 2018, they finally make an appearance in a Star Wars movie. And finally, at number one today, the line, I know. Perhaps Han's most famous line in all of Star Wars is his final exchange with Leia before being frozen in carbonite in episode five. After Leia and Han kiss, Leia admits that she loves him, to which Han responds, I know. That line has a lot of history behind it, and Harrison Ford personally wrote it because he didn't agree with what was originally in there, and Carrie Fisher reportedly hated this new line, despite how famous it would become. But we get a nice callback to this famous line in the new movie. When Han and Lando meet at the end of the movie, Lando says that he hates Han, to which Han replies with a confident, I know. I love you. I know. So there you go, guys. Those are 10 Easter eggs that you may have missed if you've seen Solo. And if you haven't seen it, be watching out for them. There are plenty of other ones, but those are the cool ones that we wanted to focus in on for you today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, become a member of the multiverse. My name is Jimmy. I will see you guys soon. Be sure to enter our monthly giveaway. For this month, we're going to be giving away 10 tickets to see the new Ant-Man movie. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on for a chance to win. Leave a comment on why you want to win with your Twitter handle attached, and I will pick the winner at the end of the month. Good luck.